stock market weekly chart review for the week of December 12th through December 16th. Before we jump into looking at the stock market on a weekly in a weekly time frame, I want to draw your attention to I have success. You're at the I have success YouTube channel. This is the I have success website. And the mission of I Have Success is to help you begin your trading journey by learning how to sell cash secured put options to more advanced strategies. But here's the thing, learning how to sell cash secured put options in a way that allows myself to grow and improve in the process. So making these videos helps me grow and improve in the process. So all the stuff that we go over in this video today you may or may not implement when selling cash secured put options you want to get a better idea about selling cash secured put options then there's a link right here at one minute and 17 seconds of this video at the end of this video you can go back and you can you can watch that link also uh, it's a link to a playlist and that playlist is in this in the description of this video so you could watch it uh, two different ways there also in the description of this video is a link to the I have success website and you can pick up different resources that will help you sell cash secured put options none of this is uh, financial advice recommendations it's a strategy to learn I think it's the it's the best beginner friendly strategy you make that decision for yourself by learning it and the paper trading it and then you do what you need to do going forward that's most suitable for you with all that out of the way let's take a quick look at these weekly charts so each each one of these charts the candles representing one week that red line is is basically uh, emulating the 200 day moving average Although on a weekly chart, uh, to get close to that 200-day moving average, you're at a 40-period a uh, 40, 40 period moving average, which is really close to 200 on a daily chart. And the time frame is six months. So we see in the last six months, this is what has happened with uh, UUP. So UUP, which uh, is a, an index for the dollar, is a little bit below that 200 day moving average really really went quite a bit below the 200 day moving average and um, rallied up but still closed a little bit below it so the last six months we've definitely seen a, a significant drop uh, about a about a two out two dollar drop in in the dollar at the same in the same time frame of six months TLT which is a uh, an ETF I believe um, whether it's an ETF or an index it's definitely for uh, 20 year bonds you see a strong got a strong slope down in that moving average and we see the bonds uh, kind of rallied up but really really sold off and then right around here pivoted towards that 200 day moving average but um, not making it really seemed to be uh, catching the support oh, there's resistance right here where it was support Right here was support, but it, it broke through, right? It almost stopped right on that 110. And it seems to be giving it some resistance right now before it gets up to that 200-day moving average. For a while, generally what's been happening is when the trend of TLT has been up or down, the stock market has kind of been moving that way. I wouldn't look at it as a 100% guarantee, but um, it's been it's been working for a little while. Let's see if it continues to work. Gold. Gold has... has uh, been flirting with that 200 day moving average rallied up this last couple weeks and it's just been up and down hugging that 200 day moving average oil broke below the 200 day moving average in the last six months it's basically in a down a down trend which isn't which is starting to reflect in the moving average right here but uh, we see this is kind of around 10 if we if we look at 20 days on average of trading per month this is about looking at roughly about a 10 month looking at a 10, 10 month indicator Bitcoin is really sloping down and this is Bitcoin the futures for whatever reason uh, TD Ameritrade 
tasty works it's uh the most the closest we can get to is the futures and my state doesn't even allow me to trade it so i was like ah whatever so anyways we're looking at the futures and um over the last six months we see it's been more than six months but it kind of has this pattern of going sideways to up dropping down kind of going sideways to up dropping down and seems to be more of the same right at the moment the vix the volatility uh index which some people call the fear meter it uh it's basically in a way it's the reverse of this although although the last couple days maybe like the last trading week it was uh it was for some reason going the same direction with the market these last four are major indices of the stock market so overall this kind of gives you an idea of um of fear in the market and generally speaking when the vix is high like this the stocks are down when the vix is low like this stocks tend to be up so stocks have been going up and the vix has kind of been going down and up it's it's been a little bit interesting spx we see that moving average been sloping down and it is just not able to break out it keeps having these failed failed rallies over that uh, 200 day moving average dow jones had a 200 day uh fake uh, breakout point failure here uh and looks like maybe it's going to be doing the same thing we at the moment we're still above that 200 day but um it's looking it's, it's coming down to test that we'll we'll see how next week and the week after play out nasdaq has not been able to even touch that uh, 200 day moving average it's got that strong slope look at that that slope is just as strong as it is over here on some people's favorite some people's not favorite bitcoin russell 2000 small mid cap maybe they're small medium small mid cap small medium mid cap uh the heck so that's what mid cap is uh, anyways so smaller stocks not not generally like a large cap but uh same thing it rallied up um in a way it's been kind of hugging this 200 day moving average similar to gold but it's been doing it a lot more weeks and it's coming up short this week uh it really broke through before it was kind of right in there but uh it's gonna have to come up quite a bit to get that we will take a another quick look at uh at these main 11 sectors of the stock market same thing weekly chart uh six month time frame we see the technology sector just like the the uh, nasdaq it, it's it's a uh, you know rallying up to uh test this 200 day and falling short healthcare healthcare was um was basically in an uptrend for a while but uh on the daily it definitely violated the the uptrend and uh i don't know where it would have to go looking at this weekly just taking a quick look at it but um it's definitely pulled back and now it's basically back to this trading range right here where I remember in the past, I was thinking, let's see what happens at 135. 135 seemed to be this, uh, you can see we get prices start to touch it and pivot back down here. So uh, I guess that's it. If it really, if it really, um, if it, uh, if it breaks this, then we, we know we have a strong confirmation that that little, that bull trend has come to a close and it looks like, um, it could but it could it could resume but uh the, everything else is looking uh looking sad too so um i'm thinking it's gonna it either already has or will break that uptrend financials financials were pretty strong too and that definitely has has broken that uptrend if we're looking at this uh pivot point right here being supported uh whoop, but we're down here we're 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 below that so we're kind of uh potentially looking at the sideways range well here's here's a sideways uh on the 200 day this is a sloping down so on a bigger time oh not a, on a if we look at more than one month or more than six months maybe we we would see uh uh just this this was rallying up in a downtrend possibly same thing here with that looking at that moving average over on the industrials they rallied up for a little while and uh you know, here we're, 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 looks like we're breaking below that 200 day. Looks like we're going to be doing that here in the industrials, uh, basic materials, same thing rallied above that 200 day, but it seems like it's going to be breaking down and, uh, 
Yeah, it's like well, it's our uptrend. I think is it has been canceled right there. Uh, energy, you know, looking at a daily chart, it's been going down, but on uh, um, on this uh, weekly chart for six months, we see we got a strong trend on the on the two hundred day, but it's starting to roll over. It looks like it's going to be rolling over a little bit, and um, maybe the where potentially you know we're we're breaking this. 80 um 85 dollar area which i think was kind of acting potentially acting as support before so uh maybe the maybe this uptrend has been violated it uh potentially looks looks like that but let's see how next week plays out on it and or you know next two weeks or so might come down here and, and do one of these come down break below the 200 day and rally back up continue that uptrend so uh we will see Consumer discretionary, we got a strong slope down. This didn't even make it up. Like at least the other sectors, they either broke out of that 200 day, uh, went up pretty strongly, or still kind of one one is still above it. But um, consumer discretionary, even technology got close. Consumer discretionary didn't even get close. And with um, consumer staples uh, broke out of uh, seems uh, out of the 200 day, but it seems like it's looking like everything else. It's either going to test it and fail or, uh, I mean, everything's kind of going to the downside. So, uh, the utility sector broke out. Um, same thing, testing that 200 day, but seems to be coming up short with it. Real estate looking like consumer discretionary. Didn't even get close to testing that. And, uh, uh retail did though. Retail has been testing it, but not, not, uh, lasting long. So, Lastly, let's finish this off with looking at some uh, looking at our, our our four major indices on a looking at the weekly chart here. So we got the monthly chart over here, and uh, it's monthly. Each candle is one month. Looking at three years of data from here to here, and uh, we we got this. Um, this is a, a 10 period moving average, which is going to give us really uh, be pretty close to the 200 day moving average. And let's take a look at SPX. And this is a daily three month uh, weekly. So daily candles, three month from left to right. Weekly candles, one year from left to right. Monthly candles, uh, three years from left to right. And uh, this moving average to emulate the 200 day moving average. So, uh, big picture on the weekly, on the, let's look at the month first. So, we see over the last three years, uh, it really rallied up. And right here, boom, we started that, uh, that bear market, right? And um, here we tested that top part, tested the 200 day, and it's really just dropped down. So this candle right here is made up of about four of these, three or four, maybe, uh, what is this? This must be, must be the December candle. So maybe it's made up of two right now. So this one, maybe two weeks, this one, one here, 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 and here. Yep. That would make sense. We're rallying up like that. We got two down there. So the big, uh, the big wave, right, is touching that 200 day and and moving down and we see that the smaller wave medium size wave inside of there doing the same thing it's it's pretty obvious on this chart we got a high lower high lower high lower high and it looks like we got low lower low lower low lower low lower low and and uh, the daily we we looked at we looked at that already uh, over on those those other those other ones, Dow Jones. This one uh, was running pretty strong, but now in the last uh, last month ended positive. Uh, this week, with about you know two two weeks of trading, we're we're back to where we started. So in two weeks, we've just basically went sideways. We'll see how the rest of the month carries out. You know, Santa Claus Christmas rally is going to be coming in. 
But looking over at that weekly, high, lower high, lower high. Right, right here, it kind of it was this lower high and then kind of a sideways high. We see these lower lows, lower lows, lower lows still. And uh, overall, it's um, it, it, <clears throat> this one was giving a, a pretty good potential to 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 break out to the upside, but uh, it uh, seems to be uh, failing that. You know, looking at this pivot point, using using this pivot point as a as a point of um reference or or support resistance is a is a notable mark we uh we violated that uh last week <laughs> and this week we really dropped down back here so we're you know we're back to basically maybe catching some uh support right right in this uh 329 area and uh we'll see next week it it, it definitely looks like it's possible that it could come down here and test this 200 day, although maybe the Christmas rally is going to kick in sooner or later. Uh, NASDAQ, you got to see that you, you see the beginning of the, of the year, we just continue to have this strong kind of downtrend, even though there's like this the green, red bar, green bar, ignored, dropped. Red, red, green, rallies up, ignored, dropped. Same thing, two, two uh, months in a row of up and now just dropped, and it's almost back to. To where it started so it just looks like it's on this monthly chart the the downtrend still looking pretty strong on the weekly yeah it looks looks kind of like that although uh see eh, something clustering up here it looks this is definitely uh catching my attention that maybe it's building a bit of a potential base we'll see but we got a low lower low lower low lower low like that low lower low lower low did i say low up here i'm at high <laughs> high lower high lower high lower high lower high low lower low lower low lower low lower low and a lower low but uh I could, I could potentially see something grinding sideways russell 2000 now this uh we seem to be right here what is quickly grabbing my attention is bit of a sideways market where we don't have as much of a strong um, uh, downtrend on the monthly like I, I really see some sideways movement uh, right in here and looking to the left I see yeah you know it started off the in this three-year uh, chart started off with dropping from this point so maybe if we looked at uh, longer back 10 years or so maybe we'd see more uh, more resistance and support coming in around that that 17 on the weekly we 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 see what's causing happening inside of this monthly we see a lot of this you know overlapping candles right here and maybe we got a double bottom right looks like possibly forming a bit of a, a w pattern right here but we got that high lower high lower high lower high Lower lows though, not not as much. They're coming in right here, and I guess that's why we're we're seeing this this trading range right in here. So that's that's looking fairly positive over there. Oh, this is the S and P five hundred SPY on a weekly chart. Oh, excuse me, on a um, it is it is a it is looking at a weekly time frame, but a line chart. And um, you know, going back months ago, I was on. On Yahoo Finance, drawing this, uh, this uh, looking at the uh, line chart and um, see putting this little little um, channel trend there. And I remember way back here, start come here. I was talking about it would be good for us to test the top of this channel, and we did. And right now it it may be breaking down. You know if it. So, so the two things that are the most probable, right? There's two things. There's three ways a stock market can go. It can go up, it can go down, and it can go sideways. And right now, it's been going basically sideways. If we were to, where is our, it's about right around 380, right? 383, but it's, it's closer to 380 than it is 420 or 400. So... 380 right around the 380 we see that it, it's it's been here it it kind of got um it kind of got uh 
started kind of overlapping in price right in here, right? So right here, it touched, it was touching that uh, 390. So it's like this three, 390 to 380 range, it seems, see right there, you know, it can go a little bit under, a little bit over, right in here, it was getting, it almost got down there, you know, got down here. We looked to the left, it did it, it did it here previously. It couldn't, it's having a hard time, hit that 380, pulls back, goes a little bit, goes over that 380, pulls back, Really shoots over that three, oh, past a little bit past 390, comes back to 380, shoots up over, <laughs> over 390, comes back, test that. So it wouldn't be, it would not surprise me if we see prices come down here and test this 380 and then go back up to 390, right? That, that would be, um, I would not be surprised at all if we just kind of grind sideways and we leave this last 12 months, 12-ish months of, um, of bear market by grinding sideways. Another thing that could happen, and I think maybe the sideways, the, for me, my, my it's not my number one pick, but I think maybe given all the different factors that I'm aware of, which I'm not aware of all of them, but all the things that I am aware of, I'm thinking the most likely scenario is a grind sideways. And one reason why I think that is because it's in the politicians, both whoever is in office and, uh, you know, pull, it's basically, it's in all the politicians' best interest to have the stock market higher. Now, if, let's say if, um, if you got the, you know, the, the, the Crips are in power and then the Bloods want to get elected. So, you know, they point, uh, that they, in that case, you know, one side wants the stock market to be lower so they can blame it on the other people. But overall, you know, they, they, they swing that back and forth. Overall, they all want the stock market to go up because like, let's say you're a governor and let's say if the, the Crips are in power, but but you're a blood and and you're you're a blood governor of a particular state, you know, and then you you want your constituents to think like you're doing something good for, you know, their, their whatever, their pensions or something, you know, maybe you're going to pass the buck to, to the federal government. I don't know, but... Anyways, I think you see what I'm talking about. Like politicians in general, they're going to want the stock market to go up because it's like, hey, we're your political leaders and we're doing a good job. So things like the uh, president's um, working group on, on the financial markets. President's. If you don't know about that, if you want, if you feel like you, you know, you want to check it out or whatever, but um, check it out. It's also called the Plunge Protection Team, the Plunger Team. Basically, uh, this was put into practice in um, uh, 1988 by Ronald Reagan, and it's to help regulate the markets. So, regulate the markets, you know, can be interpreted interpreted by whoever is in power regulating the markets, right? Say so they want to keep the markets from from crashing so you know it looks like they're doing a good job in office so they can help have the plunger team help them out you know keep it up so because of that I, I think it's but we have a lot of downward pressure right you know without without politicians meddling in here also meddling can be um, uh, making it easier for companies to do share uh, rebuyback purchases things like this all, all this little financial trickery they can do without them doing that I think the market would just be crashing I mean if you if you think like the market is kind of a reflection of the economy and how people feel about the economy in the last three months we heard talk of nuclear war <laughs> you know we're we're still we're we got wars going on and we're sending money over here for wars where we got doing stuff over there and there's just like a lot of upheaval right even in our in if you, i don't know what country you live in but i'm gonna say our country because i mean united states citizen even in our country our country is like there's people talking about civil war there's all types of kind of like social unrest and you know things like this so you know like there's 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 um certain uh certain places where walgreens is closing down stores because they got people stealing stuff so much i mean does that really seem like a thriving economy like it's a good job market people are out there you know, doing good. No, it's it's a little bit chaotic, and so you know, without without the the um, the the politicians elected and unelected, 
uh, without them meddling in here and it, like if I use the term meddling if that's offensive to you put some other term in there you know put whatever term that you know makes your panties feel okay I, well whatever I don't care about the term the fact is that they get in there and they they orchestrate stuff to to their benefit I'm not saying they shouldn't do it uh, I'm not saying they should do it I'm just saying they do it and and that's it I'm not making um not making a moral or ethical call about it. I'm trying to make a financial call about it, right? So uh, financially looking at it, knowing that, that that stuff like that happens, I think it's likely that we could see this grind sideways. I think somewhere between the 380 to you know 390, maybe even as high as 400, but it seems like just looking at past performance, and you know past performance is no uh, indication of future performance, um, generally speaking, but here, look, you know, bam, touches down right there, right? We just see it right in that 390 area, right in this 380 area. Seems like something even even down here to the, um, it must be 370. And then down here, lower into the like the 360-ish with this double bottom right here. So ultimately, if it was going from like, and, and I, I've measured this before, it is, uh, you know, I know some people that their favorite number is 357 and boom, it's right around in there, 357. And you only look to the left and you see, boom, we get caught up right in there. So here's my point of what I'm trying to get at. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that it stayed range bound. But exactly which range, I don't know. Maybe maybe 380 to 390 is too tight. But even if it were range bound to like 370 to 390, even kind of, you know, all the way up to 400 sometimes, that to me, that's, you know, that, that's in line with what where prices have have um shown different support and resistance in the past so to me that's the that would prob that would be my um that would be my least surprising scenario my second least surprising scenario is a drop past this uh 360 beginning of next year whatever like after after the holidays and um uh, just turmoil in the world in our in the United States keeps up, and for whatever reason, you know, they just just drops, and you know, we, we can't necessarily. Well, maybe maybe I should say we. I'm not necessarily going to put it past the politicians and the non-elected political political pol political people to, you know, maybe maybe somebody's got a plan to pull the rug out from the market and you know really watch it drop. Uh, if you don't think that stuff like that can happen, then um, um, read about the story of Rothschild in the Pol in the Battle of uh, Waterloo and Napoleon, and uh, you know people happened in the, whatever eighteen seventeen hundreds. So things like that can can happen now. So second least surprising scenario: drop down, uh, dr big big drop to the downside. But uh, I think eh, more more possibly something grind sideways. Now, the least likely scenario under normal con conditions, and I'll explain that in a minute. So least likely scenario is a bull rally like this. Grind sideways, I can see happening. Drop down, I can see happening. The only way I see another bull rally like this is like here, 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 is if the Federal Reserve or the Treasury, or a combination of both of them, or some sort of entity like that does some sort of program, no matter what name they call it. Because, for example, at first, you know, there was quantitative easing one. And that might have been, oops, wrong way. You know, maybe that started probably around, oh, that's not what I want. Okay, we don't have enough, uh, not going out in long enough time. Ten years. Let's go. So probably okay. Here was like the subprime, whatever it's called, like the subprime housing crash or problem or whatever that was. Now, now technically, you know, we don't want to get uh, Jeff Schneider debating whether it was really monetary, a fiscal, housing, whatever, like. I get it. It's probably not the right term. We probably don't get it. But nonetheless, here's what happened. Prices dropped, right? So I think around this time is when um, uh, 
uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner Ben Bernanke had the quote unquote courage to act. And I'm being sarcastic about that. He did win a Nobel Peace Prize. But, uh, you know, then he just decided he's going to goose the stock market for whatever reason, better or for worse. Well, you know, there's going to be, you know, this is a time when uh, everyone was saying that uh, the quantitative, quantitative easing, most people were saying, hey, the Fed can, you know, slow the ease, slow the ease. And Peter Schiff was saying, no, we've checked into a monetary roach motel. There's no way. Once you checked in, there's no way to get out. And um, and then maybe they, maybe, I don't know, I can't remember exactly when it was, but, you know, there was QE1, there was QE2, then there was something called Operation Twist, which, you know, supposedly it's not QE, but it still generated the same result. And then there was like QE Infinity, or I don't, I don't know how the, you know, what they, they, they just like changing the names of these things, but, and, and maybe they were changing a bit of the way they orchestrate it, but the net result was the same. It was pushing equities up. And then right here must have been um, must have been that uh, you know that, that that shall not be named on YouTube uh, due to due to uh, uh, you know not being on the right side of the of the <laughs> oh I think you know what I'm talking about and then anyways whoa, look at that look at that that was not because because everybody's got a job and everybody's making a lot of money that was financial engineering at its finest. Just like over here. So, you know, really Peter Schiff was right. We checked into a monetary roach motel. Now when they stop doing that, fin that financial uh, engineering, wow. So if we're going to see another, you know, grind, uh, just like a, you know, good bull market up, you could say like when they talk about inflation, uh, they said, hey, there was no inflation. There was no inflation. <clears throat> Is Maybe it's not true. Maybe there was inflation, but it was asset price inflation, right? Were these equities really deserved to be at this price? If you had companies with no earnings, companies that without financial engineering, companies that technically under um, Mussolini's definition were only surviving due to fascism, mixture of the corporate world and the government, uh, then, you know, under different scenario, would they would those equities be at that price and if that is true which i think that there's some truth to it i'm not totally um saying you know that that is the truth because there's nuance to things right and i'm not the greatest macro uh economist I'm not even the greatest micro economist i know you probably didn't believe that i wasn't great at any type of economics but yeah you know i hate to let the cat out of the bag but it's true but the point is is that you know let's just let's just go with that for a second let, let's say these asset prices, paper assets, were being pushed up through through market manipulation, and they really weren't sustainably here because of fundamental uh, good value of the company. Well, if there's not, um, you know, if there's not that that um, that air being pumped in, then it would be. If that was true, then it would be reasonable to assume that without the air being pumped in to inflate the price, then the then the price would float back down to where where the um, market value is so you know some people will call that a crash they say that's bad or whatever but for you for me and I hope for you I hope we just look at it as, as a great time to buy equities I, I want to see the equities quote unquote crash I, I would rather you know I want to let's say if the SPY is around 400 I'd rather buy the SPY at 100 and then let them you know, let them do it all over again instead of buying with four hundred dollars, instead of buying one share at a hundred dollars, you can buy four shares. Increase your asset column. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I, that's what I think. Um, those are my thoughts at the moment. You know, of uh, 12, 17, 2022, 6:23 p.m. I'm just letting you know. Uh, I have the I reserve the right to change my opinion anytime the the data changes, which I think a lot of people uh, should do. But um, whether you do or don't, that's totally up to you. So anyways, uh, that's that's where I see it. And um, now one thing that you can do is regardless of what this thing, what what these things are going on, you can try to do, do your best to buy assets at uh, uh, fundamentally sound assets at a good price uh, that are in your budget and work on building your asset column while you're cash flowing through dividends and, and option premium. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, you know, uh, potentially buying stocks you don't mind owning the rest of your life. Maybe you will own them the rest of your life. Maybe you won't. But the worst case scenario is you do. 
or maybe you know the worst case scenario is you don't and you you know rebuy them again anyways um this is a good place to go i have success i have success.com send you an email six days a week uh relating to the market and uh, you can download this at the minimum get this cash secured put stock selection guide so you have a framework it is not um financial advice it's not recommendations nothing like that it's uh it's a thought process a way to help you structure some ways of looking at at um making a suitable selection for yourself you see i have success is about uh helping you learn to make good decisions for yourself so you don't have to rely on the suspect opinion of other people next thing you could get is three stocks i sell cash secured put options on i'm still selling cash secured put options on these stocks they're not the only three they might not be suitable for you in fact let's just say they're not suitable for you so they're not stock recommendations what they are is three stocks that you maybe brand names that you know of and then you see why i particularly like them it has no fundamental analysis under there it's just I don't, I don't think it does from what I remember. It's just like different reasons why I particularly enjoy selling cash secured put options on these stocks and uh, why I don't mind getting assigned. And uh, one of them I can think of that I don't really so much care to own it the rest of my life. So sometimes I'm just, if I get assigned, I'm, I'm selling a, a covered call option on it at like 50 cents, a dollar, maybe two, $2, maybe a dollar 50, you know, out of, out of the money. So I'm just popping a quick capital gains. Is there taxes on that? Yeah, there is. So you got to speak with your tax accountant. But if you're not going to make more money because you're worried about paying taxes, then um, you know reconsider that and uh, talk to your tax advisor and see if it's better to make more money or or, or less. And you know even if let's say you make a hundred bucks, but you got to pay uh, forty, you know you, you're you're still up sixty bucks. And if you don't want to be up sixty bucks, then you know so be it. But uh, me personally, I'd rather be up sixty than not. This one stock option Greeks cheat sheet one sentence definition of the Greeks that's it just a handy dandy little thing to have you know for doing the strategy and if you follow that um, that uh, that playlist which is you know down in the description or you can go back to it whatever one minute and whatever whatever seconds uh, watch that you know if you if you if you do cash secured put options and then um, sell covered call options which is called the wheel strategy if you do that you don't really have to and you're just gonna be assigned and then be just they either if they, if they get assigned you take stock if you get assigned if you're selling covered calls it gets called away from you if you really don't care if you just want to spin that wheel of fortune over and over then the Greeks kind of don't matter in a way they, they do a little bit it can help you fine-tune it but if you just want to keep it real simple you don't you won't really have to deal with the Greeks too much when you start trading directionally and um, you know doing things that it matters on expiration date then, then you want to get a better idea of what's going on with the Greeks so um, you know maybe down the journey right maybe not at the beginning of the journey but at the beginning at least you can have a cheat sheet that when someone says gamma you can oh, what, what is what is gamma again and then you can see that one sentence definition this one is not a uh, stock market directly related in fact the first two of the two of these three are not even financially related at all number three is uh, so download that see what you want to implement into your life uh, the first one is the easiest to implement second one is the second easiest third one is the hardest one to implement but it will have the most profound impact on your financial results and I hope you have the type of personality to be able to implement number three I hope you have the willpower I hope you have the drive most people don't I do and I hope you're a person like me that does so with that go check out that stuff and um, you guys have a fantastic day if you want to take the time to introduce yourself to me in in the um, in the comment uh, please do and um, just going to be straight up with you. Any sort of like arguing, arguing and stuff like this, I'm not partaking in it. And uh, I'll just probably, I don't know, I don't know what I'll do. But uh, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my time debating and arguing on stuff that I, I think is dumb. If it's a some sort of friendly conversation, and we're we're moving forward somewhere. But uh, I kind of live by this thing. Um, if I engage in conversation with an idiot, then there's two idiots. So um, I'm trying to be a wise person. And I hope you guys are too. You guys have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.